the mic. Get, get on the mic. Just get on the mic. Get, get on, on the, the mic, mic. mic. Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome to Get On The Mic. That's where you put me in front of a microphone with a few notes and I talk about some of the more interesting things that have happened in the world of entertainment this week or whatever else I feel like talking about. Before I begin, I want to talk about my partnership with the DNA Digital Network. Now, not only be able to find this podcast on my YouTube channel, but now thanks to DNA, you'll be able to find it on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, and other places that podcasts are available. Now you can listen to this program on your favorite audio device. For more details, make sure to check out dnadigitalnetwork.com. On Get on the Mic today, we have a pretty stacked program. Uh, the first thing we're going to be talking about is Joaquin Phoenix on the possibility of playing the Joker. Apparently it's not confirmed now. Also, Woody Harrelson may be playing Carnage in the Venom movie. John Boyega talks about the possibility of joining the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Bill and Ted 3 could actually be happening. What? Also, some Deadpool test footage for the cancel animated series quote-unquote leaked. Uh, also, could we already be getting a Ready Player 2? There's also going to be some It sequel news, and the last Starfighter reboot sequel could be in the works. Uh, the first story we're going to talk about is Joaquin Phoenix possibly playing the Joker. Uh, what we know about this movie so far uh, is that Warner Brothers, producer Martin Scorsese, and director Todd Phillips are involved. Um, it's supposed to be a solo movie about the Joker's origins. And also, it's supposed to be separate from the DC Shared Universe, which we're talking uh, Man of Steel, Batman v Superman, Suicide Squad, all those that, you know, are trying to be the Marvel movies. Uh, Joaquin Phoenix has been rumored to be attached to the film for some time now, and I know we've talked about it on this podcast before. And I talked about how I think Phoenix would actually be pretty good pick for the role. And... As we know now, uh, apparently it's not confirmed that he's playing the part. Uh, in an interview with Fandango, uh, Phoenix had this to say about the role of the Joker. Quote, I see it as any other movie. I wouldn't say I don't do westerns. It depends on what it is. I don't really care about the genre. I care about the character and the filmmaker. If you have the ability to transcend the genre, then that's what you want to do. So I wouldn't say, hands down, no, I wouldn't do that kind of movie. There are things where I flirted with the possibility where there was the potential for this to be something that's actually interesting to me. But then for whatever reason, they never got to that place where everyone else feels the same way. And that's key. Everyone has to want to explore the same thing or else it just doesn't effing work. I'm not opposed to it. I don't make decisions on budget or things like that. It's really the filmmaker and the character. Um, I have to say this, if Joaquin Phoenix does take this role, him saying this only strengthens my confidence that he would do the character of the Joker justice. Uh, as we talked about before, he takes his roles very seriously. And a, a character like the Joker really needs to be taken seriously. I mean, you can be funny with it like the 60s Batman show or some of the cartoons, but if you really want to dig into the meat of what makes the Joker, and that's what this movie is supposed to be, it's supposed to be an origin movie about the Joker, you're really going to have to be able to capture that dark side of the Joker. Um, and apparently this movie is going to try to capture what made that dark side of the Joker. So I'm all for uh, Joaquin Phoenix playing role. That being said... Um, I was excited for Jared Leto's Joker too, and while I think it had a little more poten potential than some people did, um, it wasn't what I was expecting, um, and it wasn't that that what I got wasn't better than what I was expecting. Um, but I saw some promise there, and I'm hoping that maybe he can write uh, what I thought he did wrong. But I don't even know if he's going to get to play the Joker again. I'm sure he probably will. But when it comes to this origin story, um, I like the idea of Joaquin Phoenix playing the character. I'm not sure what he would do with the character yet, but he's that type of actor that will take a lot of chances. So I could see him taking a chance and possibly doing something really cool with the Joker character. Uh, the next story I want to talk about is Woody Harrelson, uh, 
and the possibility of him playing Carnage in the movie Venom. Uh, this is confirmed. Woody Harrelson is in the movie Venom, but who he is playing is unknown. It is known that Harrelson joined the production of Venom late in the production process. Um, and there's really not much more that we know than that. Um, so I had to ask myself, and I just wanted to keep this one simple. Uh, do I think he'd make a good Cletus Cassidy? Uh, yes, yes, he would. Um, I think that Harrelson has a, more than enough tools to pull off the crazy that is that character. I mean, just, you know, look at Natural Born Killers and you know he can pull off crazy. And Cletus Cassidy is just a murdering psychopath. And I think Harrelson could pull that off pretty well. Um, you know, when it comes to that character, uh, for those that don't know, uh, Cletus Cassidy becomes the villain Carnage. And see, uh, his, his suit that he wears comes from the Venom suit. Um, unlike Venom, who when he has the suit on... Uh, he still sees the symbiote or the Venom suit. It's it's an, Well, I don't know if it's going to be science in this movie or if it's going to be an alien. We just don't know. Uh, for crying out loud, we haven't, haven't even seen the suit, which, again, I'm actually kind of glad that we haven't yet. Um, he sees the Venom suit as another entity. So when he talks about him and the suit, he says we uh, when he's addressing the suit in himself. Um, Cletus Cassidy, on the other hand, uh, he bonds with the symbiote that he has so well that they become one in which he see, sees them as one entity and then he just says, I. So where there's some struggle with uh, Eddie Brock uh, in the suit where it doesn't fully take him over, uh, Cletus Cassidy, he just lets the suit take him over and they become one and uh, he actually becomes stronger uh, with the suit because of it. Now... Another question I wanted to ask, and I asked myself, is do I think that he'll be the main villain, uh, main villain of the movie Venom? Uh, no, I, I really don't. Um, I think that uh, even if we see uh, Carnage, uh, it won't be till maybe uh, after the credits um, or during the credits. Um, you know, I think that. Uh, with Woody Harrelson in the movie, I think Venom is going to stop uh, the human version of Cletus Cassidy uh, in the movie, or maybe even in the next. Um, I have a feeling it'll be this one. He'll uh, he'll send Cletus Cassidy to, to prison uh, for murder and stuff like that in the end, at least as part of the movie. Because um, I'm not I'm not really sure who the main villain is, but I can't see it being a human Cletus Cassidy the whole time. Uh, but I think he will be part of it and he'll probably end up in prison at the end of this movie or at the beginning, uh, of the next movie. But I don't think we'll even see carnage at all in this movie unless it's just a tease, like I said, at the end of the movie or during the credits. But yeah, I, I would be really excited to see, uh, he, Woody Harrelson. Let me put it this way. I really like Woody Harrelson. I think he's going to do a good job. Um, he wouldn't really be my first pick. Uh, I think my first pick would probably be Jackie Earl Haley. Um, because, and I know a lot of people don't like his Freddy movie, but he's really creepy in it. And he just has the look. Uh, whenever I see Cletus Cassie, it's kind of the look I see. Uh, I could see him playing that part really well. Um, that being said, I'm not against Woody Harrelson playing the role, so... You know, I'm not going to be too disappointed they didn't get Jackie Earl Haley to play it uh, when you got Woody Harrelson. You can't really complain too much. Uh, the next story I want to talk about uh, is John Boyega uh, talks about possibly joining the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um, at his appearance at Awesome Con in Washington, D.C. last weekend, John Boyega revealed that he has had talks with the higher ups at Marvel about a potential role in the MCU. Uh, he was asked if he'd be open to possibly playing Blade uh, because there's some fan art out there. Um, and I believe Boss Logic is the one that did the main one. Uh, he's a very cool artist, by the way. If you haven't seen his stuff, he's the one that uh, he gets a lot of gets a lot of uh, play on the Internet uh, for his Photoshop stuff. He's really good. Um, 
and he was asked about playing Blade. Uh, his answer was a bit surprising, kinda, and on and honestly, I found it a bit honorable. Uh, he said this quote. It would be a spit in the face of Wesley Snipes if I took Blade. All for Wesley Snipes playing Blade. Unquote. Um, it sounded like that uh, he can't see anyone else playing Blade. And f- honestly, I know they tried. They did that Blade TV series. And I can't remember the name of the rapper that played Blade. He was in the uh, rap group Onyx. But I can't remember which one it was uh, that tried to play him in the TV show and it was okay. Um, and even all of Wesley Snipes movies weren't good. I mean, the third one was kind of a mess. I mean, the first one's still pretty great. Um, so yeah, I, I, I have a feeling that, uh, because fans want it so bad that Wesley Snipes is going to be the, the one that ends up playing blade. Um, Boyega continued, he also stated that if you were to join the MCU, it uh, wouldn't be for a while. And also, he is just happy to be a fan for right now. He said this, quote, I love what's going on right now. You know what's going on with Marvel, but I'm happy being just an audience watcher right now. Like, I'm fulfilled. I love what I'm seeing, end quote. Um, I think of it this way. Uh, given his young age... Um, I have a feeling that he will join the MCU eventually, uh, and that would, of course, keep him under the, uh, the Disney umbrella. Um, I'm not really sure who I'd have him play, um, but a couple of ideas did come to mind. Uh, the first one, and I think this is probably, uh, the, probably the most likely pick, especially if they're looking for the future of the MCU, because you're not going to be able to have you know, the core group forever. Um, The first idea that came to my mind uh, is a version of Patriot, who uh, in the comics is the leader of the Young Avengers. Um, I think he would be a perfect fit for that. I'm not sure if they're going to set up all the story of that character or how they would do it or if he'd just be a different version of the Patriot. Um, Another one that kind of came to mind, and... You know, I hate how I hated how it came to mind because the only time I think of this character is during the comic book series of Civil War when the uh, robot clone whatever of Thor uh, killed him um, in giant form. Uh, Goliath is the other character I think of. Um, he's a character that uses a variation of the Pym particles that you've seen in the Ant Man movie, um, and he grows big to fight evil. Um, I will say this though. Uh, I'm, I'm leaning more towards him being Patriot or, I mean, you know, given, uh, the, uh, the size of the African American cast in the black Panther movie, uh, he could end up being a character in black Panther too, which if it doesn't happen, I'll be big time surprised as much money is and how good that movie is. I guess no matter what though, either way, uh, we do know that he will be back as Finn in star Wars episode nine next year. Uh, which is a movie I'm definitely looking forward to. I'm looking forward to seeing how if seeing if they can honestly just use him better than they did in uh, the Last Jedi. Uh, the next story I want to talk about, and this one, it scares me a little bit, but it also excites me. Um, Bill and Ted Three uh, could actually be happening, if you can believe that. Um, Bill and Ted Three. Uh, it's, it's widely known that it's been in development hell for many, many years. Uh, in fact, over 10 years, uh, they've been trying to get this movie made, uh, that being the writers and Keanu Reeves and Alex Winter. They've been trying to get this movie made ever since 2007. Uh, in an interview with Entertainment Weekly, Bill and Ted themselves, Keanu Reeves and Alex Winter, and the writers, uh, Chris Matheson and Ed Solomon, the writers of the first two movies, revealed that they have completed a script for the third movie and what could now be a trilogy. It could make it a trilogy, which, like I said, it scares me, and I'm excited. Uh, The movie's title would be Bill and Ted Face the Music. Um, The writing duo wrote the film on spec, which in Hollywood terms basically means for free. Uh, Solomon had this to say, uh, quote, We wanted to get it right. We wanted to have it be something that we, all four of us, Chris and I, Alex and Keanu, 
could stand behind and know we're doing this for the right reasons. Uh, when it comes to the plot of the movie, uh, it would revolve around the words that Rufus, played by the late great George Carlin, said to them in the first movie. Quote, you see, eventually your music will help put an end to war and poverty. It will align the planets and bring them into universal harmony, allowing meaningful contact with all forms of life, from extraterrestrial beings to common household pets. And it's excellent for dancing. End quote. Uh, Matheson, Matheson said about following that plot point, he says, quote, you're told you're going to save the world and now you're 50 and you haven't done it. Now we're now the characters are married and it affects their marriages and it affects their relationships with their kids and it affects their everything, end quote. Uh, Reeves and Winter chimed in. Uh, Reeves had this to say, everybody's a little older now, uh, a little afraid. And Winter added... There's certain comparisons, a rock band that never goes to the place it thought it was going to get to, having that moment in their life uh, of going, do we try to get there or do we give up the dream? Uh, Reeves added this, indomitable spirits confronted with, is this the end? Of course, there is a little caveat in that someone comes from the future and says, not only do you have to save the world, but you have to save everything. Solomon then added, I think it's kind of like a Christmas carol with Bill and Ted, looking at their lives and really kind of rediscovering what they're about. We are hoping to close a deal with some financers. Hopefully within the next month or so, we'll have some news that will stick. Um, there is some Hollywood weight behind this movie and the cameras. Uh, Winter had this to say, quote, We went out and found a director, Dean Parasot, who we love, who did Galaxy Quest, which is a masterpiece. Solomon then added, Steven Soderbergh is one of the producers on the movie, along with Scott Krumpf, the original producer of Excellent Adventure and Bogus Journey. Uh, Bill Sadler is also back, returning as the character of Death, and a few delicious cameos by people to be named at another time. Um, this movie has me really curious. Um, I didn't know it was a sequel I wanted, or a third movie, or whatever you want to call it, that I wanted... Until I read this article. I mean, I had been hearing about this for years. Again, they've been talking about it since 2007. But after reading this article, it's like, you know, I like the idea. Um, because, you know, you can have that serious message. As long as they don't get too serious. Because this is a Bill and Ted movie, after all. Um, I have to say, I admire the passion. Uh, both in front and behind the cameras that could happen if this gets made uh will it happen i don't know uh but it seems like a very strong possibility now um this is probably the most news i've heard on it and what seems like concrete news that i've heard on this project in years so it's got me curious it really does uh the next story i want to talk about is some deadpool test footage for the canceled animated series got quote unquote leaked uh, after news of the cancellation of the animated Deadpool series and Donald Glover's very public statements about it, uh, if you've read up on some of this Twitter stuff, it's very interesting about him getting in the character and everything. Um, some more news has been has, has developed, and it's taking a page out of the live action movies playbook, sorta. Remember how the live action Deadpool test footage got quote unquote leaked, uh, which all but led to the movie being made? Well, something similar has happened here. Uh, footage from a rejected bid by Titmus Animation found its way online. The very cartoony, ultra-slapstick and violent animation was matched to the audio from either the live-action movie or the quote-unquote leaked test footage, uh, given that the voice of this Deadpool for the animation is... Ryan Reynolds. It's definitely Ryan Reynolds. I'm not sure which one it comes from because they're really not all that different. Um, I don't know if this animation was a similar direction uh, to where they were going with the series, but if it was, I kind of thought it worked kind of well. Um, it felt very uh, Looney Tunish in a way. Um, you know, very... I mean, it, I mean, it was, was bloody violent, uh, but... You know, there's a part where Deadpool 
get squashed, you know, and then he's flat. Things like that. Like I said, very, very Looney Tunes. Um, and, and really, if we're going to do a cartoon that's kind of based on Deadpool's psyche, that might actually work. Uh, in other news about the Cancel series, it seems that a planned episode revolving around singer Taylor Swift might have been the last straw for the series. That's at least according to Stephen Glover, uh, Donald Glover's brother and show co-writer. Uh, he said over Twitter, uh, there really was a Taylor Swift episode. It was hilarious, and it definitely was the last straw. Lol. Um, you know, who knows really why this project got canceled? I mean, you know, they're, the the production company's sticking with, you know, creative differences. Um, I'm sure there's more to it than that. Um, I do have to say this though. I have a feeling that this isn't the last we have heard of this project. And part of me thinks that this is a work. Um, because think of how, again, how the Deadpool movie got made. You know, Ryan Reynolds tried for years to get it made and he couldn't get his foot through the door. Everyone's memory of Deadpool was Baraka Pool. With his, with his, you know, optic blast eyes from X-Men Origins Wolverine. The test footage gets leaked. And all of a sudden, we, we got a Deadpool movie in production. I just have this feeling. I know this cartoon was already being made. But part of me thinks it's hype. I really do. I have this feeling that this might not be the end of it. I could be wrong. I really could. And I wouldn't be surprised if I was wrong. But... Given how the marketing for all things Deadpool has gone since the quote-unquote leaked footage that made the movie, I could see this being a work. I don't know. I just don't know. I, I don't want to believe that this is the last we've heard of this project. Moving on. Um, could we already be getting a Ready Player 2? Uh, with the seemingly instant success of Ready Player 1, one would assume that a sequel would probably be in the works. Well, one would assume right. Uh, in an interview back in February with The Hollywood Reporter, uh, the book's author and screenplay co-writer Ernest Klein had this to say about it. Quote, I had to start writing the sequel last year while the movie was being finished just to stay ahead of the curve. It's a good problem to have, but if this movie does well, the following week they'll decide whether or not they want to make Ready Player 2. And it occurred to me I should finish. I'd imagine, or I'd always intended to write more in the series, but I never imagined the movie would get done before I finished writing them. So I had to kick into kick it in the high gear. Here's the funny thing about that title. Uh, this is the first I had heard of him writing a sequel to Ready Player One. And again, I have not read the book. Um, I've studied up on it after seeing the movie, um, but about the title in our tag team review of the movie over on the geek B cube YouTube channel, uh, the Heisner and I joked about that. The title was going to be ready player two. If a sequel was to happen even before, uh, I'd read this article and knew it was already a thing. Um, so I guess we were right. Um, if you haven't heard our before and after review of the movie, uh, you can actually check that out on the Geek Be Cubed YouTube channel. Um, we did a, you know, our what we thought the movie was going to be and what we kind of wanted to see and didn't want to see. Kind of did a before thing. And then after we both saw it, we talked about, you know, what we thought of it afterwards. Uh, it is a bit of a spoilery review. We, we weren't going to do that and then it just kind of went there and it's like, you know what, why not? Um, so if you haven't seen the movie wait until you see it before you watch our review at least the the after part of it um one question that probably comes to mind if they are going to make a sequel to this movie though is would steven spielberg return to direct it um while spielberg or while spielberg directing a, directing a sequel uh isn't anything new um, he did return for both one of the jurassic parks and uh indiana jones of course uh, Spielberg, who's 71 years old, uh, stated that Ready Player One is, quote, one of the most difficult movies he's ever made. Uh, and this is behind Jaws and Saving Private Ryan, according to him. Uh, Klein also had some comments about this as well, about the possibility of Spielberg coming back. 
Uh, he said Spielberg uh, has already been giving him input on the story sequel anyway. He said, quote, I can't talk about it much, but I can tell you there's no better inspiration for a writer returning to a world they've already worked on when they're seeing Steven Spielberg bringing that world to life. To get to talk to him and get his input, one of the greatest storytellers of all time and a storyteller that had a direct influence on my first novel, Ready Player One. So to get to not only collaborate with him to bring the first story to life, but to bounce ideas off of him for the sequel is the most gratifying thing that's ever happened to me in my life. You think he's happy? <laughs> um, if I had a guess... Uh, I'd bet that Spielberg uh, will definitely at least produce uh, any future movies based on this this potential franchise. Um, after hearing what Klein had to say, I'm willing to bet he's definitely going to be a consultant on the movie. Now, will he direct? I don't know. I don't think so. Um, I think he would be kind of maybe a shadow director, but I think he would let somebody kind of, you know, he'd be a very on hands producer, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, he would let someone else do the, the hard labor and legwork. I think, um, I mean, he's definitely, he's already got a lot on his plate. Uh, he's wanting to do that West side story remake. He's wanting to, uh, he's wanting to do Indiana Jones five, which we'll actually talk about here uh, in quick hits. Um, so he's got a lot going on. I, I can't see him doing another one of these. Um, you never know. But he, if he's talking about being like one of the hardest movies he ever made, that sounds like maybe what he what he did with uh, with Transformers where he produced it. It's like, well, I better get someone else to direct it. Lord help us if it gets Michael Bay to direct Ready Player Two. Um, but I, I honestly think, yeah, he, I don't think he'll direct it. I could be wrong. But I'm I'm pretty sure that he would pass the baton off to somebody else and then be very hands-on still when it comes to a lot about the movie. He just wouldn't do the heavy lifting, I guess we'll say. Uh, the next story I want to talk about uh, is news about the It sequel. Um, after seeing one of the surprise hits of 2017... And after hearing news that Jessica Chastain was in talks to star as the adult version of Beverly Marsh, uh, many of us assumed that the second chapter would be all about the adult versions of the kids from chapter one. Uh, it seems that though we are not done with the kids' story, according to the movie's director, Andreas Muchetti. Uh, he tweeted out a picture with the post, wake up losers, Darius calling, hashtag, hashtag it chapter two, hashtag it movie. Uh, it seems we're getting the characters as both kids and adults in the sequel, um, which honestly is not a bad idea. I mean, the kids in the first movie, I mean, it's some, some of the most fantastic acting from child actors I've seen. Uh, most of them were really solid. And I would hate to see them only be used the one time. Um, my best guess is that they'll be used in flashbacks throughout the movie. I mean, I don't think we're going to continue a ton real time, like in their time zone, since they already dealt with Pennywise and their, their time. And they have to wait the 20, however many years it was, 20, 30 years, whatever the exact number was. I can't remember, but I, I see them, you know, flashing back and showing some stuff that happened to them in that, in those years, uh, that maybe led up to the adult moments. Um, I still, I, I think the adults are going to take the majority of the movie, but having the kids there, not a terrible idea since they were so good. Um, in other it movie news and boy, this one's good. Um, it seems that author Stephen King wasn't too happy that his child orgy scene from the book was scrapped from the new movie. Um, he said this, and he believes people are more since quote more sensitive now about such issues. He said this quote: "It's fascinating to me that there has been so much comments or so many comments about that single sex scene and so little about the multiple child murders. Uh, that must mean something, but I'm not sure what." End quote. Um, you know, I haven't read it, uh, but I've heard about this scene and honestly, it doesn't 
resonate with me the way it resonates with him. It just kind of comes off weird to me. I understand what he's trying to do, what he's trying to say, uh, but it didn't work for me. Um, he says that the scene uh, is vital in connecting the two storylines, the adult and kid storylines. Uh, quote, I wasn't really thinking of the sexual aspect of it. The book dealt with childhood and adulthood. The grown-ups don't remember their childhood. None of us remember what we did as children. We think we do, but we don't remember it as, as it really happened. Intuitively, the losers knew they had to be together again. The sexual act connected childhood and adulthood. It's another version of the glass tunnel that connects the children's library and the adult library. Times have changed since I wrote that scene, and there is now more sensitivity to those issues. End quote. Um, while I think some reviewers... Um, would have applauded the movie for being quote unquote daring for including the scene, um, for it sticking to the source material. Um, honestly, for the majority of moviegoers, I think it would have been, it would have been a big turnoff. I think if that would have happened, it would have lost everyone at the end of the movie. Cause that movie was so good. And then all of a sudden you've got these kids having sex together. And I think, I think it would throw everyone out of that movie. And it's not about sensitivity. It's just weird anyway. Like I said, I know what he's trying to do. It just doesn't work for me. I don't know if it works for anybody. It creeps me out if, if it does. Um, but that's just it. Here's here's my opinion. And I know not everyone agrees with this. I know there's people that didn't like uh, the new It movie. But the movie's fantastic without it. You know, I think them murdering... A demon clown brought them together pretty well. And I think, you know, he's saying we don't remember our childhood. I think they'd remember that, right? I think they'd remember murdering demon clown. Um, and that would bring them together. So, yeah, I'm, I'm really, I think it would have ruined the movie for me. Had that scene been in there. I, I, I Yeah, it definitely would have ruined it for me. Um, the next story I want to talk about, and this one I'm really excited about because... Though I don't get excited about uh, reboots or remakes, uh, especially if the movie's good. And this is a movie I liked. Um, but I, I've always wanted to see a sequel or, you know, or something about it because I, I felt it was a missed opportunity in the past. Um, the Last Starfighter uh, could be getting a reboot sequel. Um, for years, many have tried to remake or reboot or have a sequel to the 1984 cult classic. Uh, even Steven Spielberg uh, couldn't get the rights to make the movie. Um, the The original movie's writer, uh, Jonathan, I'm going to butcher this guy's name, Jonathan Boutel, um, had the rights tied up until now, it seems. In a tweet from Rogue One screenwriter Gary Whitta, he hinted that he was working on a reboot slash sequel of the movie The Last Starfighter. He tweeted... Okay, probably shouldn't show you this so early, but here's a little something I've been tinkering, tinkering on with my co-writer, Jonathan Butel. Um, and he had some pictures of some ships and stuff like that. Uh, and they were definitely the ships from The Last Starfighter. Uh, he then tweeted to actor Seth Rogen, uh, who tried for years to get a remake of the movie made. Uh, Rogen has said, said a few years ago, a uh, few movies, quote, few movies deserve a remake like that one. Speaking about The Last Starfighter. In a later interview, Witta talked about whether or not this will be a reboot or a sequel. And he said this, quote, we have a fully developed story that is a combination of reboot and sequel that we both think honors the legacy of the original film while passing the torch to a new generation, end quote. Uh, when asked if Rogan would be involved, he said this, quote, Personally, I think he would make a fantastic Centauri. For those that haven't seen that movie or just haven't seen it in a while or are just curious, uh, for those that don't know, uh, they're, they are the alien beings that create the video game that's in the movie uh, on Earth that the main character plays. And it's meant to find the best starfighters in the universe. Um, after they break certain scores and everything, they get recruited. Um, and the Centauri are the ones that created that game. Um, again, this is a movie that I've always wanted to see become a series, even as a kid. Uh, that movie, fueled by my love of movies like Star Wars, uh, 
that movie then fueled my love for other movies and shows and games such as V Battlestar Galactica, uh, the Wing Commander games. Uh, no, I'm not talking about the movie because um, that movie sucked. Um, and other things. I mean, I'm I I've always enjoyed you know like space battles and things like that. And I'm not saying all movies that do that are good, but the ones that are you know, have always stuck with me. And last starfighter was one that really stuck with me. Um, I just really dig the story. I dig the alien makeup, you know, i love the ships. I love just the idea of the movie about being recruited, uh, on earth. Uh, it's one of those movies that if you watch it as a kid, you're not going to get everything that's going on. But when you get older, you do, and it's like Ghostbusters, you know? Certain jokes and scenes make more sense to you uh, when you're an adult. So yeah, if they're going to make a uh, Battlestar Galactica um, reboot sequel, I I really want it to be at least a pseudo-sequel, because I don't want them to just remake it. Uh, I would love it if they'd kind of continue... Uh, the series kind of where it left off where the character, the main character from, uh, the original film could be like the veteran now, you know, something like that. And then, you know, you kind of train the new generation. I don't want to see it become independence day resurgence. I think they need to be smarter about it than that. But, uh, it's one that I think I'd definitely like to see. Uh, and I've always kind of wanted to see it for a long time. Um, the next thing I want to talk about, I wasn't sure if I was going to talk about this um, before I get into quick hits. Um, this news broke today. Uh, I'm filming this late on Thursday. Um, I'm a big MMA fan, and uh, I saw a story today that kind of made me sick. Um, those of you that know MMA and you've probably even heard about it anyway, cause it's probably the big story in sports, uh, right now. Um, I'm a big MMA UFC fan, Bellator. I, I, I'll watch whatever I can. I, you know, can't always afford the pay-per-views cause man, they're expensive, but if I can watch a fight, I'll watch a fight. I love, I love martial arts. Um, and I love watching, you know, two guys, uh, or two gals. I mean, it depends, you know. I, I like both. Um, I like watching competition. Um, I like seeing skill versus skill. And a sto- the story that's big today is uh, someone... I've, I've lost a lot of admiration for someone uh, today. Um, I And I had a feeling this was going to happen, especially after seeing um, the way that he handled... Uh, his boxing match, and of course I'm talking about Conor McGregor. Um, for the longest time, I enjoyed Conor McGregor. I've never called him my favorite fighter, um, but I enjoyed his fights and his uh, ability to set up a fight because he was one of those fighters that he's brash, he's young, you know, he knows how to uh, get in someone's head, during a press conference, um, he just got a big mouth, but then, you know, he can back it up. And if he couldn't back it up, say like when he fought Nate Diaz and Nate Diaz beat him on short notice, he got humbled for a bit. But then when he beat Nate Diaz, he was back to being, you know, the cocky SOB that, uh, you know, we all loved him for, but I lost a lot of respect for him today. Um, you know, you talk crap during, you know, a setup for a fight as part of the game, right? But what happened today kind of turned my stomach. Um, There's a fighter named Habib uh, Nurmagomedov, and I probably just butchered his last name. I've been practicing trying to say it. Um, He's a Russian fighter uh, who's like 24, 25, and 0. And he's had beef with Conor McGregor for years. They should have fought a long time ago, but there's always an issue. Khabib was out uh, for like a couple years with injuries and things like that. But he's back, and he's on his game. I mean, he's still winning. Uh, He's fighting for uh, the lightweight title this weekend. And there was already a big uh, mix-up 
you know, with injuries and things like that. I'm not going to get into all that. Uh, where the fight almost got scrapped and then they got a replacement. Um, but then the big story has been, see, Conor McGregor won uh, two UFC titles, right? And he got stripped of one. Uh, he had them both at the same time, but he got stripped of one because he hadn't defended it in forever. He never defended the first title he won. And then when he won the lightweight title, uh, he didn't defend that. And he went and it's been, I think they said something like 500 days since he won it. Uh, which, I mean, I watched that fight and I enjoyed that fight and I cheered for Connor in that fight. But then he didn't defend this title. And then he went out a child. I, I get, I gave him that because like, you know, you're going to have a family take some time off. I get it. Um, but then he come back and didn't fight in May. He went and fought boxing, which fine. He went and fought Floyd Mayweather and lost, um, and did decently in the fight. You know, that's fine. But then all of a sudden he's still not coming back and he may not come back cause he's a millionaire now. And he's, he, he just kept seeming like he was getting more cocky and more cocky. Well, I don't know the entire story cause well, I'm, I'm not there in New York right now, but uh, there was something along the lines of one of Connor's friends was going to be fighting on the card and Khabib approached him and like Khabib and his crew approached him and something, they had an argument or something and it, it was quick and there was video of it out there. And then, uh, also, uh, it come to find out now Dana White, the president of the UFC, uh, is going to finally strip Connor of his belt. It took him forever to do so. He w- he would not commit to it because I think he thought Connor would come in and say, "No, no, I'm fighting," you know. But he never did, and so uh, Tony Ferguson has an interim belt, which is like the you know placeholder belt whenever a belt can't be defended. As usually, if someone wins an interim belt when the real champion comes back, the two fight and that merges the belts, right? Well, now this fight with Nurkana Madoff is going to be for the lightweight title. And, and Dana White came out, and, came out and said that is the title. And Conor McGregor didn't take to it too well. I don't have the tweet in front of me, but it was basically saying the, you know, they're not taking my belt and not so many nice words. Um, then all of a sudden, um, after this incident happens with Connor's friend that's fighting and they're going to made off. Um, then all of a sudden today, uh, Connor comes to New York with like 20 or 25 guys and they attack the bus that's carrying, carrying they're going to made off. And, the other uh, red corner fighters, there's the red corner and the blue corner uh, whenever you're fighting. And they keep the red corners together and they keep the, the blue corner fighters together. They were throwing chairs and barricades and it looked like one of them threw a dolly. Uh, the, a window or so, or some windows got broke. One of the fighters got all cut up and I don't think he's going to be able to fight. Another fighter may have had glass in his eye. They scared the hell out of... Uh, uh, Thug Rose, who uh, she has a title fight uh, on Saturday, and uh, you know, I know that. Look, I, and like I said, I lost a ton of respect for McGregor today because, you know, I I always liked McGregor because yeah, he talked a lot of crap, but then he backed it up in the the cage, right in the cage. He would talk smack, say how good he is, but then they would get in the cage and settle it, right? But all of a sudden, he's got beef with someone. I mean, I guess it's not all of a sudden. He's had beef for a long time with this fighter, um, with Khabib, but he goes and does this. He, he puts a whole fight card in jeopardy. By attacking a bus with, you know, like I said, 20, 25 guys. Plus, they did not have passes to come in the Barclays Center. Right? Apparently, 
uh, a news organization called the Mac Life, which is basically, you know, Conor McGregor, you know, fanboys that are journalists. They let him in, apparently. They let him and his group in. Just let him right in. And this happens. And I don't know what kind of crimes. I know the police are looking for Connor as as I'm recording this. Um, he's. I don't think they have... Dana White come out and said they had a, a, an arrest warrant for him. But that apparently wasn't true, at least as of right now. Um, but the police are looking for him. And, you know, it's like, it's hard for me to respect that. It's hard for me to respect him whenever he does something like this. Now, Grand, yes, this is not the worst thing someone in sports has ever done. Um, But see, I, I have a lot of respect for martial arts and I have a lot of respect for MMA. And, you know, I'm all for the game, right? I mean, we all know that. At least, I mean, especially now, and you can definitely see it more in Bellator, but you can also see it in UFC. I mean, they they've all but taken wrestling wrestling's you know pro wrestling's playbook when it comes to promoting fights and everything. I mean, there's storylines, even though the outcome at the end is real. Uh, but there is some. I mean, sometimes the animosity is real, sometimes it's not. Um, but they take a lot from the playbook of wrestling. Um, but to see this happen today, uh, it, it made me sick. And I I hated seeing someone I admired so much that I thought was just good at playing the game. Uh, I mean, they're, they're saying that drugs might have been involved. Um, I mean, that's just pure speculation and rumor. Um, but they're saying they thought he might have been coked up. Um, I mean, Connor has more money than... A lot of people now, especially after fighting Floyd Mayweather in that boxing match, but who knows what, how, why he did this? I mean, yeah, Habib and uh, this guy had a confrontation, but it was solved pretty quick. They they separated him; it was done. But now all of a sudden, you know, McGregor's and his crew are committing, you know, misdemeanors, possible felonies. And his career could be over. You know, he could go to jail. You never know. Chances are he'll probably get some kind of probation for this. Then again, I could see, you know, and this has happened This happened a little bit with John Jones. Even though I don't think he did jail time. He may have spent a little time in jail. But um, I don't know if I can't remember all the facts behind all his problems. But, you know, being that they're dealing with this John Jones stuff now. And then all of a sudden this happens. I could see them... McGregor is such a big star, you know, you know, you know how it goes. You know, we love to see a star rise, but then, you know, we also love to see a star fall. Um, I could see this turning into, you know, let's make an example out of Connor. Um, I just, I mean, who knows what he's going to say uh, whenever he finally either turns himself in or, or contacts the cops or he gets caught um, cause I have not heard, apparently his plane that he brought, uh, they grounded it. He isn't going anywhere. Um, not at least in, by plane. Um, so yeah, I'm really curious how this is going to turn out. Uh, and like I said, it's hard, it's hard for me to want to give the guy respect anymore. Um. You mean, I mean, like I said, maybe there was drugs involved. I don't know. Maybe he's just, he really is a complete a-hole. You just never know. We don't know anything right now. People can speculate all they want. But I enjoy contact sports for the competition, for the skill. You know, yeah, I enjoy the smack talk and everything. It's because I'm a wrestling fan. You know, I enjoy that. But when it turns into something like this, I... I just can't get behind it, and thank you for letting me speak my mind. I, I wasn't going to talk about it because uh, I know this isn't a, a sports show, but as a fan, I, I really just had to get that off my chest. All right, now we're going to get into quick hits. Uh, according to actor Zachary Kinto, uh, multiple Star Trek scripts are in development, not just one. 
While he and others are excited with the possibility of working with Quentin Tarantino, uh, he said he doesn't know when the supposed R-rated Star Trek movie will happen. Uh, Simon Pegg doesn't even think the R-rated Tarantino Star Trek movie will happen at all, or at least for a long time. Um, Simon Pegg, uh, he, he doesn't even think that even if this movie does get made, uh, he doesn't think Quentin Tarantino will even get to direct it. Uh, he thinks the director will be too busy, uh, to make it in a fast enough timetable to make the studios happy. Um, but if he did make it, he said he thinks that he would give the subject matter the utmost respect. Uh, speaking of Simon Pegg, he revealed that the last Jedi reveal about race parentage kind of derailed the plans of JJ Abrams. Uh, Abrams wanted to give, uh, Ray a relevant lineage according to Pegg. Uh, the question is now is this. Will Abrams undo what Johnson did and make it that Kylo Ren was just lying to her? Um, I guess we'll have to wait until 2019 for that answer. That being said, I'm sticking with my Obi-Wan theory. So, we all know that Orson Welles spent an entire movie looking for his sled, but little did he know that Steven Spielberg had it the whole time. Spielberg, who bought the sled at auction in 1982 for $55,000, will be donating the Rosebud sled to the Academy Museum. Somewhat quoting Indiana Jones, he said, It really belongs in a museum so that everybody can see it, end quote. It was one of three sleds made for the film Citizen Kane. Speaking of Indiana Jones and Steven Spielberg, Spielberg believes that the future of the franchise will be a female Indiana Jones. He said in an interview, quote, I have been very lucky to be influenced by women, several of whom I have just madly uh, loved madly, my mom and my wife. Now, I, I think he was joking about this, quote, We'd have to change the name from Jones to Joan, and there would be nothing wrong with that, end quote. Uh, He also hinted that Indiana Jones 5 will be Harrison Ford's last time as the character. He said, quote, I don't think anyone could replace Harrison as Indy. I don't think that's ever going to happen. It's certainly not my intention to ever have another actor step into his shoes in the way there have been many actors that have played Spider-Man or Batman. There is only going to be one actor playing Indiana Jones, and that's Harrison Ford, end quote. You know, though I'd be fine with an, a female Indiana Jones, uh, my dream would be for a grown-up short round to take over. Um, next story. Uh, do you know that Dr. Ian Malcolm was almost cut out of Jurassic Park? They almost merged his character with Dr. Alan Grant. Now, it's hard to imagine that the movie would be anything less than one big pile of, you know, had he not been in the movie. Okay, the dinosaurs would still be pretty awesome, but hey, come on. Uh, in the Yui Bull is a moron category, the director of such craptastic video game based movies such as Blood Rain and Alone in the Dark is threatening lawsuits against The Rock's new movie based on the 1986 video game Rampage. He feels that the movie will shrink revenues generating from his own Rampage series. Look, Yui, while, while your Rampage series is probably the best movies that you've ever made, um, good luck getting Warner Brothers to cave there, big guy. Did you know that John Hamm was supposed to be at the end of the original script for New Mutants as the popular X-Men villain Mr. Sinister? That would have been awesome. What the hell, Fox? Um, there was also a rumor that Matt Damon was supposed to be cast as an unknown villain for Spider for the Spider-Man Homecoming sequel. I guess for the time being, we're stuck with him playing Tom Hiddleston playing Loki in Thor Ragnarok. And lastly, a Jigsaw sequel is in the works. Look, while I enjoyed Jigsaw for what it was, and Tobin Bell was great in it, I'm really not that interested in more movies in that series, unless you're going to actually tell me what happened to Dr. Gordon after Part 7 anyway. That's going to do it for Quick Hits. Um, Now I want to give you guys a bit of a uh, Real Geno YouTube channel update. Again, as I've been saying, the quest for 4,000 hours continues. Or does it? Hey, I have to, I have to say this. I'm, I'm excited, uh, because I hit the mark this week. I hit the 4,000 hours a while back. I hit the 15 or the 1000 subscribers. Uh, but it it took a while to get to that 4,000 hours, but I finally made it this week. So now I've applied for my monetization reevaluation. So look, thank you so much for helping me possibly bust through YouTube's doors. 
even if they don't welcome me back with open arms, um, I can at least say I did it. And I have every single one of you that have watched my videos, have commented on my videos, uh, have just been with me this entire time or just join me. Um, whoever, you know, I appreciate each and every one of you for helping me hit this milestone, whether or not I get back in the fold or whatever you want to say, or whatever you want to call it. Again, I can at least say I did it. And I'm really excited about that. Lastly, I want to draw your attention to a few different things. Uh, first is the geek be cubed YouTube channel, uh, which is the partnership between me and my friend, Bill Heisenberg fields. Um, there we do a week, a bi-weekly podcast, uh, called the GB3 podcast. Um, on there, uh, we talk about all things tech, geek, whether it be games, movies, whatever. We talk about all sorts of stuff. Also on the channel, we now did a dual before and after tag team review of Ready Player One, which I mentioned earlier in this podcast. Uh, so if you want to check that out, go to the Geek Be Cubed YouTube channel. Also, I ask that you check out my partner, Grime Heisenert's channel. Uh, he does gaming live streams and let's plays. He also does a weekly podcast himself called Heisenert Speaks. Um, also, Bill and I are going to be doing a live uh, stream playthrough of Dungeons and Dragons Tower of Doom next Monday night, April 9th, around 9 ish Central Time on his YouTube channel. Just search for Heisenerd on YouTube. That's H E I S E N E R D. Um, if you want to join us for that, again, that's the Heisenerd YouTube channel. Lastly, I want to thank Dennis from the DNA Digital Network. Um, so now, not only be able to find all three podcasts in the GB3 family, uh, on YouTube, which the programs are Get on the Mic, the GB3 Podcast, and Heisner Speaks. But now, thanks to DNA, you'll be able to find them on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, and other places that podcasts are available. Now you can listen to all three of these programs on your favorite audio device. For more details, make sure to check out dnadigitalnetwork.com. As always, I want to thank everyone for your support of this program and of my YouTube channel and the stuff that I work on, and for those that support uh, my friends and everything, uh, I, I appreciate that so much as well. Now that I've hit the goal, look around for other YouTubers that are smaller, and if you like them, subscribe to them, watch their stuff, help them reach the milestone as well. You know, I'm, I'm very excited that I, that I made it, but I still feel for those that are out there working really hard uh, and trying to make their dreams come true or their hobbies come true. And, you know, they're just not getting there. And I feel like a, there's a lot of undiscovered talent out there on YouTube that uh, aren't getting the recognition that they earn and that they, quite frankly, deserve. There's a lot of them out there that I enjoy that are under a thousand subscribers, um, you know, and uh, I, I'd like to see uh, a lot of these smaller channels, uh, you know, get to break through those YouTube doors as well. Um, that's going to be all for get on the mic this week. Again, thank you so much for listening and I hope you guys have a good week. Um, WrestleMania weekend, uh, is this weekend. So, uh, definitely going to be busy for me. Got hall of fame on Friday. We got, uh, NXT on Saturday. We got WrestleMania on Sunday. Plus if, if you've got all the other wrestling, uh, places where you can see wrestling, there's all sorts of other events going on too. So yeah, WrestleMania weekend, it's always an exciting time for me again. Thank you so much for listening. This is the real Gino, Gino Reynolds, and this has been get on the mic. Peace.